Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus once again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Here I am today sharing with you some notes that I've been given by the Spirit once again. And as I reflect on the things and the time that I spent out here speaking to you, I'm reminded that it's been quite some time. But here I am, forced to do so, because I've had experiences over the past 36, 37 years that are remaining the same. It doesn't matter what I do or what I've tried to do. And it keeps me especially focusing on the past 16 years. For eight years, I listened to George W. Bush talk to you, the American people, deceiving you, lying to you, and you buying into it. And when you didn't buy into it, you accepted it as if there was nothing that you could do about it. And then there came in Barack Obama, made all the right promises, made the promises that I see that America was hoping for, the maximum people of America are hoping for. People all around the world was hoping for. When Barack stood up talking that freedom talk, that special kind of talk, looked like the world was saying, come on, Barack, I know it's going to be tight, but you got us with you. Barack walked in there and acted like he was in there by himself and was he acted like he was chicken hearted. I know he wasn't. He might not just have been ready. And when I look at him I, and I look at Donald Trump who's coming in saying he can do so much, and what am I thinking now? I'm thinking that Barack represents blackness, people who've been held down. He represents slavery, even though he might have had a little bit more than the usual black people, I guess. But he was still a black man living in a white man's world, or what, you, what has been referred to a world of superiority of others. And so he went in to me, and I'm thinking, I'm not saying it's true, but it makes me think that he went in acting like a slave who was scared to do something unless he was, he was okay. He knew what was right, but he couldn't do it because it wasn't okay. Then you got Donald Trump, a privileged white guy who has been convinced that he represents superiority. You can hear the way he talks. Now he walks in and it's saying the same, different things with Barack Obama, but just as bizarre. And the world stood up against him, but he had enough people to say, come on in. And now he's walking in like a white dude, doing everything, uh, at least attempting to do everything he said he was going to do. And you think white people are going to stop him? Do you think white people are going to stop him? When I hear uh, Donald Trump speak, when I look at him speak, he represents to me what I've seen in movies, white men. White men who were killing natives and calling the natives savages. He represented to me slave owners who had black people and calling them niggas. He represented to me white men, rich men who didn't give a darn about women. And yet he is up there in that office saying things that making people sick. But his group, his little narrow group, is saying okay. And those who, my friends, who were against him, who talked against him. They look like little scared chickens falling in line. Falling in line. He tells you that he's going to build a wall that, that the Mexicans are going to pay for. But he's going to tell you that he's going to get America to pay, build, build a wall first. And Mexico is going to reimburse him. Now, let's say the wall gets up. All of you, the citizens out here who are homeless, who can't get uh, food for your kids, who can't get adequate education. Those money is going to be spent to build up a big wall to put us in a in a cocoon. So if anybody want to attack us, we can't even get out. We got a wall that's blocking us. And here we are. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, listening to that guy. And he says Mexico is going to reimburse us. Mexico said, no, I'm not. And what's going to happen at the end of his term? I don't know if it's four years or eight years. We would have footed a wall. And he says, well, I got a wall up. He's going to think he outsmarted you by lying to you. Outsmarted you by lying to you. But then why do I keep on doing what I do. I was trying to find some justification that you might understand. And I was reminded by someone that was speaking and it sent me to the fourth chapter of Luke in the King James Version of the Bible, beginning at the 18th verse. And it says, the spirit of the Lord is talking about me right now, is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Americans, you must now speak for yourselves. Your representatives have sold you out. 
They spoke against Trump to deceive you. Trump was a sure end by the powers that be from the very beginning. He jived all the way. The media was forced to focus on the jive. Not his proposals, not what he's saying he's going to do, but the jive. That's what they were focusing on so you wouldn't know what was going on. And you could not recognize the game. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, based upon where I speak to you from, where I come from, this here we're experiencing every day is hell. It's a place that's absent of peace and prosperity and joy for everyone. It is a, a, a purporter of crime and violence due to injustice. Rather than liberal enjoyment, many are forced to sell drugs, beginning from the maker, which are the rich, to the seller on the street which is the poor, to the user, who seems to be the hopeless. It is a place where resources given to enhance life are used to create weapons of mass destruction that are used to enforce compliance to the rule of hell. It is a place of division by race, gender, age, material possession. It is a place of terrorism and war, totally absent of positive awareness. It is a place where megachurches, are used to keep the public ignorant of any truth by rewarding preachers with extreme amounts of wealth for lying to the parishioners about God's uh, response to seed planting and fake healing. It is a place where any true display of compassion is unacceptable and assassinations are the result if not discontinued. You have heard that hell is a place where inhabitants burn forever. This is a trick to create fear of death causing acceptance to this hell instead of resisting it. Hell is a place where existence becomes more and more unbearable daily. Hell is a place, a condition, absent of truth, where lies are rewarded, evil is rewarded. As with Operation Paperclip, when they took those evil people out of Germany, who were creating stuff that were killing Jews, millions of Jews, and brought them into this, slipped them into this society to use them to be able to manipulate them so they would give them the authority, the power of evil, the power of demonic, dem the power of devils to do to other people that what Germany was doing. Now, people who, this nation, Russia, and all the other big powers are doing the same thing. It is the place, my friends, hell is, where the most evil of humankind. Seek to become God and the human race its subjects. A place where the most evil of humankind seek to be God again and the human race is their subject. A place where everyone with weapons are used or where weapons are used, uh, where weapons are used on others. Hell is a place where food and clothing and shelter and education and health care and choice careers are denied to many. A parent knowing the truth will choose to die and leave hell rather than stay for family who are spouse, children, or parents. He leaves as an example to all. They may understand or not, but no one Well, no one, this is here, continue to live in here. I made my notes, ladies and gentlemen, I got so tired from being up so late, I, my writing is messed up, and you can tell. Your president is so busy addressing what is, what, what's important to him, leaving out that which isn't, such as the disaster of storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and sinkholes. It's just pathetic, ladies and gentlemen. This morning I heard an interview uh, with Trump where they were asking him would he use weapons of mass destruction? Uh, would he use would he waterboarding? And he was explaining, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, that with what's going on in other parts of the world, he wouldn't take nothing off the, off the table. He said he would fight fire with fire. And my little daughter said, Dad, how can he do that? I thought you fight fire with the fire extension or water 
or some other uh, in, uh, instrument that would put out fire. But I was told that if you got fire, now you can ask Donald Trump this, if his hotel was on fire, if one of his hotels, his property was on fire, would he bring water or would he bring some other uh, material to put out his fire or would he set an, another room on fire to add to the fire as if it's going to save his hotel? I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, wake up, wake up, wake up. Now, now know what I said to you. Don't mean nothing. I know it doesn't mean a thing. Some of you say these things already to yourselves. But what are you going to do? You find all kinds of excuses. I heard a preacher tell me just the other day that, Eddie, you better be careful. Some of these things that you're saying, Donald Trump might run across it, and then you might be in trouble, and you can't afford to do that. you got to stay and protect your children. I'm looking at him, thinking in the back of my mind. I am on this earth because of God. And every child I got is here because of God. Because of God. And each of us got a responsibility to God. Yes, God wants me to look after those kids. And he all wants me to be taking care of his business. And if his business gets my kids in trouble, then it is God's responsibility to look after my kids. First of all, before it's God's responsibility, it's your responsibility as citizens of America. It is your responsibility of human be as human beings to protect and look after my kids if I am killed. But if you won't do it, then it's God's responsibility. But if God chooses to say that my kids should be freed from this hell and allows them to, to leave this material life and come into a spiritual life where I don't know what form of bodies you use there, but if that's the choice, then that's God's choice. And, 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 and I, I'm with what God wants. Maybe there is nothing. I don't know anything about the afterlife, but I do know this part of life. If you stand up, all of a sudden you start feeling free. If you stand up, all of a sudden you start feeling like you can accomplish anything. If you stand up, then you start feeling like a man instead of a punk. If you stand up, I promise you the world will change. And a person who's talking about hating other folks, hating these people, protecting you, we all know what he's talking about. When he's talking about going back to bring America back, he's not talking about freedom for all of Americans. That's a goddamn lie. He's talking about white supremacy. And he's not just talking about this on his own, ladies and gentlemen. You heard him say, I am the mouthpiece. Now the poor thing, poor white trash think he's talking about them. Thinks that he's talking about their mouthpiece. No, he's a mouthpiece for the powers that be. He's a mouthpiece for the Illuminati. He's a powerful. And if you watch social media, there's guys like Alex Jones who set up that's oh, Donald Trump is gonna do this. Donald Trump is gonna do this. He's pushing it. And then Donald Trump saying, I, I'm the one who knows the answer. My, and all of these generals who you said talking about are against the little things that Donald Trump is saying here and there. That doesn't mean a hill of beans. When Donald Trump starts saying, I'm going to do it, those generals are going to fall in line. Why? Because generals, I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, you might not understand. What generals have already done is that they've fallen in line. If they had not fallen in line, they would not be generals. You did not get to the top by having your own mind. You got to the top by being a program. And if you're not following a program, your butt is at the bottom. If you learn the secrets at the top and decide not to uh, adhere to them, your ass is in the ground. Now stop being a fool, America. Stand up and protect your children, not just yourself. Stand up and protect one another. And let it be known that the power of God is in you and not in mega churches who got planes and jets. And you can't tell the difference between them than the jet setters and the, the people that you put down. You can't tell the difference between the one percent, one percenters and the mega preachers. In fact, the mega preachers call themselves the part of the one percenters. So I'm telling to you, Today, 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 stand your ass up and defend truth. Stand your ass up and defend, and defend life. Stand your ass up. <laughs> and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.